little bit, but not really. I'm going to keep going. It's going to be a long one. <laughs> um, so yeah, Canada is looking, Canada's economy is looking really rough. I've kind of shielded myself as much as I could from that. And, you know, if if the economy tanks in Canada, we're going to have some serious issues. I'm going to have serious issues of getting anything. So that's why I'm just trying to bust my butt, save for that lithium battery. So at least I have two. And actually, I want, I want two more lithium batteries. One to go over there, and I've mentioned this before, so I can daisy chain them together over on my big, big setup. And then I want one back here to replace my AGM batteries. And I need some way of tying in the wind turbine to an MPPT because it's the, my wind turbine has a built-in charge controller. I don't know if it's a PWM, I don't know what it is, but I need someone to tell me who's smarter than I am. Can I take the voltage coming out of the wind turbine, which has already been um, processed by a charge controller, put it into another charge controller, but an MPPT that I can strictly control for lithium battery, and, and then have another lithium battery, or, or no, same battery, same lithium battery, but having that, have, an, have my existing MPPT charge up the lithium battery as well as a hybrid system from the solar over there. Somebody should be able to help me with that and let me know what's, what's possible. But we will see, we will see. And then I think I can, if I buy a wind turbine setup, I think I can, I'm going to have to get a dump load somehow and just dump the load somewhere, some way, somehow, I don't know how. We're going to have to figure it out because my viewers are awesome and they know how to figure stuff out. Um, so yeah, I'm really concerned about Canadian economy. Everything is going to revolve around 2020. It is going to be a huge thing for Canada and the United States combined. Now, our trade deals have passed, our trade deals have gone through that USMCA, but that really doesn't mean much because the car, the manufacturers of these vehicles see that uh, Trump's doing an awesome job spurring business down there and they want to go there or Mexico. Not, I don't think they want to come to Canada or stay in Canada myself. Uh, one of our plants just closed um, just before Christmas. So Merry Christmas to those folks. They're out of a job. Very, very bad. Uh, that was a lot of people gone. That's going to, that damaged the economy very badly. And that's just the, that's just kind of like the warning shot. Um, all these other manufacturers are next. They're on the chopping block. Whether they pull up and bail is, uh, as in my opinion, I think they're going to. I could be totally wrong, but the way the economy is here in Canada, guys, it's getting rough. Now. The opposite end of the economy here in Canada is because our stupid government is bringing in all these packies um, that are invading, we have a housing shortage for Canada. And really, it's, it's bad. Like, there's not enough houses to go around. They're building houses thousands of houses a day because no one can find apartments no one can find ho affordable housing and the the prices of everything have just gone up let me check my cell phone somebody somebody's texting me
Yep. So anyway, <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know, guys. It's like I'm not worried about the U.S. too much, other than the fact if Trump doesn't get back in, then everybody's really going to be shafted. But I'm talking more Canada right now, and man, we're in a rough spot. Um, I know personally quite a few people that are in debt and all they do is work. Remember remember a little while ago guys when all I did was work? Like no free time whatsoever to get over here to the tiny house? Well those people are doing that throughout the entire year and they're not even getting ahead. They're just making they're just breaking even to keep going. So imagine a big shakeup here in the economy. Not good. Not good whatsoever. So if you're not if you're not into preparedness and don't know what all this means, what am I talking about? Who cares? If you're one of those people, good luck to you. Um, ignorance is bliss, I guess, but uh, you're going to pay for it in the end. And if you don't have some kind of plan B to live off the grid and be in charge of how you get your food, how you get your water, how you, how you heat, heat your house, how you cool your house, if you don't have an idea of how you're going to do that, then... <clears throat> things are going to get rough. And for me personally, I can live without air conditioning. Um, but heat, I got to have. I'm in Canada, guys. This is no joke. So, I'm going to do the best I can. I'm in a, I'm in a good position right now. I worked my bag off this year. And I absolutely deserve the vacation that's coming to me uh, later uh, we live, uh, we're leaving at the end of, J near the end of January, so I will be gone for a, a good solid week, but I will bring back all the video from that trip. <clears throat> now, you guys in the comments, please comment about that, because I don't know if I want to post that up on YouTube or not. <laughs> Sorry. Just texting. I'm getting the hiccups too, by the way. Oh, man. Yeah, that... Oh, I'm back to my smoothies, actually, guys, by the way. I make a killer smoothie, breakfast smoothie in the morning. I got um, my probiotic powders, my fiber powders, turmeric. I didn't add any hemp seed this morning because I had to refill one of the containers. But excellent shake tastes really good um has a little fruit juices in there uh, combination mixed but because i add a lot of fiber it doesn't make my pancreas go out of control so i don't get diabetes that's kind of like the goal as long if you eat something sugary guys and have fiber with it like a good amount of fiber with it you'll be fine you'll just kind of You'll kind of coast, your pancreas will kind of just coast along. But if you just have something sugary, your pancreas will go off the charts and then slowly recover. But then again, that's for another video. I don't have to tell you health crap, right? Um, there you go. So getting popular on the text thing, apparently. Um, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, guys, but I hope everybody out there has a plan B, has at least a bug out bag, and a place to go. Um, not necessarily you need power, but it would be really nice. Solar panels are pretty affordable now, and I highly suggest to anybody who is building a bug out cabin or preparedness place, forget AGM batteries, forget lead acid batteries, go directly to lithium. I know the cost is insane up front, but 
the battery will last you 15 years if you treat it properly. 15 years, guys. That'll get you through a lot of crap, right? If, in my opinion. Now, you just got to kind of do your research on lithium and what type you get and how to keep it safe and protected and all that. But spend the money, get something decent, because if the system goes down, guess what? You're going to be hard-pressed finding batteries <laughs> to replace that one. So, Or just try to run everything that you can possibly um, directly from uh, your setup. Try to figure a way like, like you can do that all direct somehow. Um, just like solar panel direct to a load. Um, and I don't know, it would be pretty sketchy like because it's only going to work in the daytime and what what have you but yeah I'd also uh, invest in uh, wood stoves and maybe learn how to build a wood stove without um, the modern system um, being available to you maybe build a rocket stove if you're into that um, I've I don't dare build a rocket stove because I do not have all the information on that. I have the book. I watch a lot of videos on YouTube about rocket stoves. And you know what? I'm just not going to go there. I bought my Cuba Grill, uh, Grizzly Mini. Uh, <coughs> it does a decent job, but it is not 100% perfect. I give it a 70% out of 100% because it is too small for the tiny house. But that, that being said, when I get the place up to, up to temperature, I can literally just use the Cubic Mini Grizzly to keep, maintain the temperature. I don't need my propane whatsoever. I went through a whole night and it was fairly cool out like that just with the wood stove now mind you I had to get up every three hours to feed the stove but you know that's the way it is normally normally how it works is I'm in bed I can feel the temperature start dropping so I'm like oh I gotta get up it's too cold and then I zombie my way over to the stove load her up shut the door run back to the sh bed bed sheets and under the blankets and fall back asleep <laughs> so i'm like half half asleep doing the job I, I haven't burned myself yet so that's a good thing but uh yeah and the stove has been burning very well um, I cleaned the the flue uh, recently, and man, I think it's that that double wall pipe is the key. Um, absolutely burning clean, no creosote, like very little creosote buildup whatsoever. And I've been burning it pretty steady, so pretty amazed at that. And then I got to get this guy going too sometime. <laughs>